I'm a Rowan Zam, I'm product manager from uh, Agent Technology, soon to be Keysight. Today, uh, in the next 15 minutes, I'd like to uh, talk about how to effectively maintain military communication system. And uh, we're going to cover a couple of uh, aspects. One is uh, we're going to look at what the total uh, communication system is about in, uh, for military. And uh, we have a couple of examples. And uh, here's a roughly overview of what the military or, uh, or uh, mission critical communication system is about. This typically has uh, uh, radar, which is the almost ubiquitous uh, component inside the, any type of communication system. And uh, whether uh, you're searching radar or, uh, or uh, for the FAA to track the airplane. And uh, SECOM yearly is for long-range communication. And uh, last, you also get, uh, we're going to have a VHF, UHF radio typically uh, handle the local communication as well. There are a couple other uh, like a microwave uh, link yearly for point-to-point -point emer emergency communication. Imagine you are in some kind of disaster time. You want to have uh, uh, quickly build up the backhaul communication. Of course, GPS is a critical part uh, in today's life. You always want to track. And today, uh, today we're not going to go through each one of them. I'm going to focus on radar and uh, satellite. One of the couple key challenges for uh, critical communication system is uh, most of uh, those system is uh, unique. There's a lot of component built in. So uh, unique, I mean, it's not like uh, mass production. So each system may need to uh, be tuned separately. And uh, there's a lot of com uh, components built inside the system, like uh, you know, filter, daplexer, duplexer, amplifier. And uh, one of the key aspects, technically speaking, is uh, people doing this type of system always want to make sure their uh, filter or amplifier measure in the field, in the, in the real-time environment is uh, match with uh, what you're doing inside the lab. So that's a particular challenge when you bring instrument to the field. Okay, any communication system will involve cable antenna. So I uh, do a little bit, ba go back to basic look at cable antenna tasks, what it is. And uh, there are two uh, key elements for cable antenna tasks. One is return loss, basically is how much energy I send out, how much coming back to me. Ideally, I want zero come back to me. And uh, another part is uh, we call distance to fall. This is a kind of interesting topic. When you're doing distance to fall, typically we use the FDR as uh, use the neuralizer based uh, time domain measurement. We send a swap signal to the uh, cable line and uh, the signal coming back, we do uh, inverse FFT. Because it's the mathematic conversion of return loss or S11, now that introduced certain uh, interesting aspect when you're doing distance to fault measurement. That means your, uh, your frequency span setup is uh, related to what the result you're going to get. So there are two types of mode. One is what we call low pass mode, one is the band pass mode. And uh, let me see. Okay. So band pass mode, typically you're dealing with, uh, you have a device is band limited inside your system. Think about if you are trying to share mo uh, one cable, you multiple band, you try to share a cable, you will have a multiplexer. Sometimes we'll call duplexer, sometimes call triplexer. Those are band limited device. So if you, tr you have a band limited device in your system, you try to sweep a broadband from low frequency to high, then you get a big peak in the front and then you're not going to make a good measurement. And in those situations, you want to make sure when you swipe your cable or antenna line, the frequency setup must be in, uh, limited by the uh, filter you have. A lot of people don't realize that until they find out they couldn't uh, find out there's a big peak, big uh, reflection. They couldn't try to figure out. That's essentially what it is. If you primarily measure broadband device, the definition of broadband device is uh, like uh, cables connector or, uh, amp uh, or sorry, antenna. Antenna we consider is a broadband device. And uh, if you measure broadband device, you can just put a low pass mode. The benefit of low pass mode is we start from low frequency. Typically, you can transmit much longer distance, so you can measure much longer cable. And also allow uh, advanced program to actually uh, 
extend the frequency close to zero, close to DC, so you can look at the impedance value. I, if you have uh, positive impedance, typically tell you you have uh, you know inductan uh, inductance, and uh, if you have capacitor type of uh, uh, capacitor type of uh, impedance, then it tell you you may your cable may break. So you give people a pretty good indicator what type of uh, fault is happening in the network. Besides uh, return loss and uh, distance to fall, there's another uh, key measurement is cable loss is very important. The reason is imagine you have a couple thousand watts of radar. If you have a 1 dB uh, loss, that's typically represent 10% of your power. It could be transmit 10% more or 10% uh, less, typically 10% less. That means you have a hard time to reach your target. And uh, there are two type of uh, cable loss measurement. One is the one port, another two port. One port basically we uh, leverage the return loss measurement Essentially, we make a return loss, but we don't put a 50 ohm low at the end of the device or cable. That means that we force the signal coming back, travel twice, go to the far end and coming back. So you basically use uh, leverage that you make a return loss value measurement and divide by two. Well, since uh, this is a non-control environment, so you basically go to the end of the cable coming back. So it's not as accurate as two-port device, but. A lot of situations, that's the only way you have. Because uh, when you cable install, you're not going to have a lot of uh, chance to basically hook up both sides of uh, both ends of the cable. There's a lot of component inside the uh, communication system, especially dealing with uh, cavity filters, amplifier. So inevitably, you're going to deal dealing with, you need a vector analyzer to make those measurements. And, uh, it's a doing a critical communication system that has a lot of different filters. One of the things kind of unique, most of the devices are we call non-insertable device. It's uh, you know, basically you could have a female in, female out. Or even worse situation, you could have a waveguide at one end of the device and the coax at the other end. How, can, how are you going to deal with that? It's a traditional analyzer may not be able to do it if you do not have a forward receiver architecture. So for receiver architecture allow us to calibrate the instrument using unknown through cal. Unknown through means I don't care which con uh, what type of connector you have, whether it's insertable or non-insertable, we'll be able to make those measurements. And uh, this I just uh, kind of talk about one of the feature inside the Agilent Field Fox. Uh, we have a demo over there. I'm not going to go to the detail. Bottom line is the box uh, you turn it on, we calibrate at the end of the port. That's really helped to uh, help our customer to can uh, get to the task very, very quickly rather than do open short low. So the, you can turn it on, you can immediately making uh, you know, one port measurement uh, or two port measurement. All at this time is to calibrate at the port so you have to, uh, all the test cable and the connector will be counted as part of your system. If you say, okay, I do want to extend to end of the test port, we have, uh, okay, we have a uh, technique called QuickCal. It's actually, there's two eCal module being built inside the box. We'll measure the loss of the cable, uh, jumper cable and the adapter, and also the phase shift. So we'll automatically uh, extend to end of the cable, so you can make those measurements. Some situation you do want to measure uh, going to a, a more sophisticated device or cavity filter is a very, very narrow band. And uh, in the, uh, in outside the band, there's a lot of uh, nonlinear behavior of your face. So you cannot simply use uh, uh, quick cal to make those measurements. You want to use a user cal. And you can do open short low cal. You can do, uh, it, since it's a forward receiver architecture, so we can literally do virtually any calibration techniques you have. You can have a, tier, we can uh, do TRL cal like a waveguide, or uh, you can do uh, the unknown through cal. So both the eight terms and the 12 terms uh, error correction can be performed in the field. This is just a demonstration, quick demonstration about the cal uh, waveguide calibration. You also, by the way, you also can define your own calibration. And uh, in some situation, you may have a one side, one end have a different cal kit, sorry, different waveguide uh, flange at uh, each port. You can define your own to make those measurements. The bottom line is we want to make an accurate measurement uh, in the field. 
okay, we talked about cable antenna test, we talked about uh, VNA, let's kind of dive into the detail, look at two examples. The first one is radar. So this is a radar equation. We're not coming here to study radar equations. The, the whole point I put here is really uh, represent what are the key components in the radar system we need to take in care in the field. And the bottom line is, uh, of course, you uh, will test the antenna. Yearly, this is a waveguide and uh, or coax cable. They always have a duplex or duplexer or PA for a transmit and a low noise amplifier uh, for the receive end. Last but not least, we need to mod, uh, look at the pulse measurement. So the, here is a list of the measurements. We, uh, we look at different radar, some are commercial radar, like uh, FAA type of radar for airport navigation uh, or nav navigation aids, or there's some military radar as well. So bottom line, regardless of what type of radar you have, here's a list of measurements. I'm gonna not go into each, de uh, each detail. And uh, so you have a cable antenna test, one of the things is the radar pulse measurement. Radar have a sequence of pulse. You want to make sure their peak power is properly measured and uh, as, well as, the, uh, as well as the pulse waves. So you can use uh, uh, spectralizer to make those measurements fairly quickly. Use the time gating to look at the pulse waves, rise time and fall time. All right, uh, last of all, we're going to talk about uh, satellite ground station. This is uh, relatively uh, short. And uh, similar to radar, but it now it's not pulsed. Uh, satellite ground station literally transmit uh, modulated signal. And uh, again, you're dealing with uh, antenna, duplex, or waveguide. Here's the key test for uh, satellite. And uh, there are two key things. One is the antenna alignment, which is uh, you know, one of the critical, basically we call peak search. And uh, you literally use the uh, satellite as your signal source, then you use the spectralizer to search the peak. And another measurement is a very uh, popular or very critical for satellite is uh, called antenna pattern. You essentially use the, you know, geo, let's say geostationary satellite as your signal source, then you slowly moving your uh, an, uh, antenna and uh, use the spectralizer can, to plot out the uh, antenna pattern. And uh, last but not least is the up converter, down converter measurement. Those you can use uh, uh, inside the Agile and Fieldfox have uh, uh, frequency offset measurement. You allow you to make up and down converter measurement. Went through a lot of topics. You can see for uh, military communication system is fairly sophisticated and uh, require very accurate measurement because uh, somebody's life was online. And uh, uh, Measurement results need to match with uh, uh, bench results. That's why, you know, Agile and uh, Fieldfox are able to uh, use those uh, uh, measurement signs in the bench top to make those measurements. And uh, we have our box, uh, we have a demo in our booth, and uh, if you have a further question, you can come to our booth. All right, thank you.